Hi, my name is Rob and welcome to Metal Monthly. This is a video series where we talk about everything that happened in metal music over the last month. It's fast paced, it's laid back, we're gonna have a good time, let's get into it. What? Oh yeah, albums! What albums came out in June? First off, Avenged Sevenfold with Life is But a Dream. I've never really been a big fan of Avenged Sevenfold, although I can't really say why. I think it's probably because everybody I knew hated Avenged Sevenfold. This band gets a lot of hate, and I'm not saying it still exists, but looking at the reviews of this album on Google, that's a lot of one-star reviews. There aren't too many two, three, and four stars. Just saying, that doesn't seem normal. <laughs> anyway, this album was actually really good. It's more than just your standard heavy metal. There's a lot going on here. There is normal heavy metal singing. There is some screamo-like stuff. There is some very light, almost operatic style singing. And the singer, M Shadows, also does that thing where instead of singing, you just say the lyrics really fast. The music style also changes quite a lot. There's a lot of fuzzy bass lines. There's a lot of keyboards that are very light and dreamlike in places. And also it goes into just thrash metal in places. <laughs> It's a very varied album. Apparently the album was made, at least in part, due to the band throwing away the conventional ways of making songs and embracing... drugs. <laughs> and that's not a criticism in any way. I'm kind of glad this album was made like this because it's really interesting and fun to listen to. The pace, style, genre, it all changes quite a lot throughout the album and it keeps every song interesting. Wow, I genuinely never saw myself ever recommending an Avenged Sevenfold album. <laughs> Next up, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizards with Petrodragonic Apocalypse, or Dawn of Eternal Night, an annihilation of planet Earth and the beginning of Merciless Damnation. So this is a weird band who does whatever they like and I love them for it. This album is a little bit on the way to being stoner metal, which is definitely my jam. I really enjoyed this album. It's got wonderfully gruff bass guitar, fast high-pitched guitars, some Americana gruff vocals. Oh, it's a really good album. <laughs> The lead singer summed up the theme of the album perfectly. It's about humankind and about planet Earth, but it's also about witches and dragons and shit. <laughs> All the songs were made in one day each with no starting point. The band just got together and started jamming and saw what came together. And you can definitely tell that in the songs. They kind of go from different styles and genres together. It's, it's very much a jam session, but it makes really good songs. And then the songs feel rushed, they move organically from one phase to another, and it just makes really good listening. Anyway, fucking love this album, definitely recommend it. Next up, Queens of the Stone Age with In Time's New Roman. Number one, I love the Queens of the Stone Age. Number two, I haven't listened to stuff they've released for quite a long time. Number three, I really like that album title, it's funny. <laughs> so this is... Definitely a Queens of the Stone Age album. You listen to it and you go, oh, that is the sound of Queens of the Stone Age. And they're really good songs. They're maybe less radio friendly than other songs. You're not going to find a Burn the Witch on this album. There's nothing that catchy, I suppose. The song Paper Machete is probably the closest to that kind of song on there. And it is the best song on the album. But even that, I'm not sure how much wide appeal it's going to have. But the album has got all the elements of a classic Queens of the Stone Age album. It's got the fuzzy guitar, it's got the kind of slowed down rock that they are known for. And although on some songs, I swear to God, Josh Harm is trying to sound like David Bowie, on the songs where he's not, he sounds amazing. And finally, the album I listened to just because I liked the band or album name is Bongzilla with Dab City. Now, to be fair, that's not the only reason I listen to it. I know I like Bongzilla because I've reviewed them before for an episode of Metal Monthly a year or so ago and I really like them, they do stoner metal, shockingly, uh, <laughs> but it's really good. So stoner metal is kind of like sludge metal, but a bit faster, if that helps. And it's probably my favorite genre of metal music, to be perfectly honest. The guitar is very distorted, the drums are very simple, and they just kind of pop and help the music stand out a bit more. The vocals are a little bit rough for my liking, but then again, they aren't there that often. <laughs> it's a little bit of vocals, a lot of music. It's that kind of album. Apparently this whole album was recorded on tape, which I didn't notice or care about, but I know there are some audio files out there who will fucking love that about this album. <laughs> I was also spent ages thinking like, why is this called Dab City? Why would a stoner metal band make an album based on that hand gesture? Uh, but then I realised that dabbing is also a weird thing, so, you know, that makes sense. Also, it's a reference to their hometown of Madison, which is known as Mad City, so, you know, the more you know. 
Now, despite all the weird references, this is not a novelty band. They are a really good stoner metal band. I really recommend checking them out, even if you don't partake. Um, just check them out if you like that kind of music, because they are fantastic. So next up is Music Festival Explorer. This is my website where I write about music festivals and heavy metal and just music in general. Uh, but actually, this month I haven't written anything for the website. <laughs> But I did go to Download Festival this month. Um, since getting back from Download Festival, I've had a bit of a case of the sads, or a depressive bout, if that's what you want to call it. I don't like that phrase. Um, so I haven't been able to write anything. I will try and write something for next month. But in the meantime, I have made a lot of videos about Download Festival recently. You could watch those. You know, just saying. Anyway, I will try and write something for it this month. There is a link in the description to the website. Please do check it out. Anyway, finally, we move on to the fun stories from last month. So first off, we have news of a new streaming service called Thunderflix, which is trying to be the new Netflix, but for heavy metal. Hashtag not an ad, by the way. I just thought this was interesting and I wanted to talk about it. So this is a streaming service dedicated entirely to heavy metal live performances, documentaries, behind the scenes and stuff. And it's all for the low, low price of £6.66 per month. I see what you did there. Also, they are promising to pay their creators more than Netflix and Spotify do, although that's a promise right now. There's no actual proof of that, so we'll wait and see. But it's a cool idea. They basically want to put up every live performance, documentary, series, anything about heavy metal that's been out in the last 30 years and into the future on this one site, which I think is a really cool idea. Currently, they have got Black Sabbath The End on there. They have got a Rage Against the Machine live performance from Finsbury Park and a bunch of other stuff. If you're interested, you should check it out. It's a cool idea. And finally, we have the story of Les Chatons, who are a French-Canadian heavy metal band who are all about having fun and making heavy metal not gatekeeper-y. They want to make it accessible to everybody. Their songs are funny and relatable and also covering lots of different genres. They've got thrash metal songs, they've got punk metal songs, they've got rap metal songs. Basically, if you want to get into any sort of heavy metal, they do it. But, okay, the important thing about the band is that they are called Les Chatons, who, if I'm saying it right, you may have worked out, they are cat-themed. <laughs> they wear cat ears and whiskers. They're named after cats. <laughs> They're a very fun, silly band, and that's awesome. That's basically it. When asked why cat, the drummer Hugo De La Rosville simply responded, Why not? <laughs> Anyway, that is everything I have for you this month. Thank you so much for watching. If you've liked this video, please do click like and subscribe. It really helps me out. My name is Rob, and I will see you in another video very soon.